So last time we talked about um, was it binary uh, back and forth between binary and decimal. Well, um, let's actually upgrade that a bit. So we talked about binary and decimal, but we didn't talk about is something rather important, which is what if we're dealing with fractions? We haven't actually mentioned that yet, but if we're dealing with fractions, so let's see what we're talking about there. Um, we have our powers of 2, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, uh, 64, one twenty-eight. right? I can keep going and on and on, and I'll stop 1024, okay. If we want to deal with fractions, okay, so let's just mention that, so with fractions. Okay, uh, what to do? Uh, let's take a look. So, as before, we have our places, so um, just mention those places here. So we have our ones, we have our twos, our fours, our sixteens, and our thirty twos. Okay, we also have um, in binary, uh, if we're dealing with uh, fractional numbers, we have a little dot here. By the way, this is not known anymore as a decimal point. So, a decimal point, by the way, would refer to base 10 because, well, we have decimal, but binary is not decimal. Binary is binary. So, instead, the more generic term to use instead is not decimal point, but da -da -da -da, radix point. So, uh, radix is just another term for base. So, um, this is a point that refers to uh, at what point that we're going from our whole numbers to our fractional numbers. So, on the left hand side, we have our whole places. So, remember, these are our places. And these are our values over here, or digits, I should say. And to be more accurate, I'll say bits, but you get the idea. Um, so to the right-hand side of this radix point, we have our fractional parts. So you might wonder, well, what's that going to look like? Um, now, just to review really quick, if we were dealing with, um, let's just scroll to the side for a second, just a little aside, because we're going to the side, go figure. If we were dealing with, say, like 10.75, uh, right? If that's our number, let's say, 10 and 3 fourths, right? We have our decimal point here. To the left, we have the whole part. To the right, we have our fractional part. Um, this, by the way, just to review, this would be our 10 to the 0 spot. This is our 10 to the 1 spot. This over here is our 10 to the negative 1 spot. This is our 10 to the negative 2 spot. So actually, I mean, this would be our ten. Like another way of saying this is our tens. This is our ones. This is our. Uh, I shouldn't even write it this way. Um, this is our tenths. This is our <coughs> hundredths. Okay. So, um, as it turns out in binary, this is rather similar in terms of what we're doing. So if we go back over here. Right, instead of having our tens, our tenths, so we'll have instead our halves, or maybe I should say halves, okay, we'll have our um, fourths, we'll have our eighths, and our uh, sixteenths, and then our thirty seconds. You know what? I think I found a mistake already. One, two, four, sixteen. What? That's crazy. That's that's wrong. Okay. So, if you noticed that earlier, good for you. If you didn't, you're in good company. Okay. So let's fix that. That should not be sixteen and thirty-two. The next power of two is eight. So I should say our eight. These are. Uh, Sixteenths, or 
sixteens, not sixteenths. <laughs> See, I'm all sorts of confused. All right, sixteens. Nope. Anyway, okay, just a little aside. Okay. All right, so right, maybe just for fun, I'll put our one, our two, our four, our eight, and our sixteen over here. And over here, I'll say one half, our one fourth, our one eighth, and our one sixteenth, and our one thirty second. Okay, good times. All right, and likewise, just just for completion, right? I mean, this would be our ten spot. This is our um, ones. This is our one tenth. This is our one one hundredth spot. So you see, there's a there's an order to this. Okay, so going back to binary. Okay, so back to binary. Um, suppose I have some random number here. I'll just say um, one o o one o, and then I'll have one o one o o. Let's say. Okay. All right. So this one, this number here is going to be. I mean, I can just do this really quick. We have sixteen plus two. That's going to be in decimal. This part. If I just. By the way, th the way I'm doing this, I should say, is. I'm going to look at these uh, separately. I'm going to look at the left-hand side, which is our whole part. And then I'll look at the right-hand side, so our fractional part. And I'll do these separately. And then I'll just join them together to do the conversion. So, um, so we'll, first we'll look at this part, because we know how to do this already. So um, 16 plus 2, that's just 18. Okay dot okay and then I'll look at this part so this is where we just I mean we do the exact same thing as before we you know we sum up uh, the uh, place value times sorry the place times the value so one half uh, times let's see so times one is just one half let's see one eighth is let's see that that in decimal let's say this is 0.25 this is 0.125 so this is actually um, I should say this is uh, just over a little side over here. We have 0.5 plus point this is going to be 0.125. Just to make sure we're doing this right, this is going to be 0.625. So 18.625. Okay, so that's what this number is in in uh, decimal. There you go. All right. Um, now the strategy, the algorithm for converting from decimal. Uh, into binary is going to be exactly the same. So let's let's look at our example that we had earlier. So let's go back over here. So here we go. Whoop, ten point seven five, right? Ten point seven five. If I want to convert this to binary, okay, um, I have to do. It's going to be the same basic strategy. I'm going to take the what's on the left hand side, the whole part, and then I'll look at the right hand side. I'll look at the uh, fractional part. And I'll look at those separately. So 10 in decimal is what in binary? Well, again, the algorithm, let's go by the algorithm, we find the highest power of 2. So the highest power of 2 that can go into 10 is actually 8, right? So, so I'll write down my 1s, my 2s, my 4s, and my 8th spot. So 8 can go into 10. So that's our, just write these out. Okay. All right. Um, now 4, so let's just keep track. So we have 10 minus 8, right? What we have left is two, all right? Now, four doesn't go into two, so I'll just write down zero over there. Um, but two does go into two, uh, and now we're left with nothing. So we have two minus two, we have nothing left. So, well, one doesn't go into that, so we end up with one oh, one oh. Okay, so now I have my radix point, or now, uh, yeah, I'll have my radix point over here. And now we have uh, 0.75. So um, let's just write our places out so we have our half spot. And we have our uh, one fourth spot, and well, actually, that might be sufficient. Um, we'll, we'll see why. So, so what I do is I say, okay, well, what's the highest power of two that can go into 0.75? Well, um, that would actually be one half because one half is just 0.5, so 0.5, right? Um, this is actually a really easy example. This is going to leave 0.25. So we'll write one there, and well, one fourth is just going to be. Um, that's what that is. So if I subtract away 
because that's what one fourth is, right? We end up with nothing. So there you go. That's what this number is in binary. So this is our decimal over here. We have our decimal spot, or our decimal. And over here, we have our binary. Um, and that's doing with uh, fractional parts. Now, the fun thing uh, about uh, this conversion, uh, let's take a look at one more conversion before we call it a day. Um, suppose we're dealing with um, just this number here, 0 0.65. Okay. All right. Uh, and before we really talk about that, I just wanted to mention um, uh, something about uh, precision. Okay. This is not really an issue for the whole part. It's for more for the fractional part. So this fractional part is always giving us headaches. Okay. Here's why. Um, before we get to 0.65, let's think about uh, something that's really uh, like one third in decimal can't be represented exactly. That's like 0.333 on and on forever and ever. Okay. So we can't represent this number in decimal exactly. Uh, now, if this were base three, if we were representing um, one third in base three, that'd just be uh, 0 0.1 uh, in base three. But that's outside the scope of this discussion. Um, but in any event, uh, if we take a look at 0 0.65, and we want to represent that in, uh, in uh, binary, what we would end up with is something that's kind of, kind of a, uh, something tricky. So let's write this out over here. So we'll have 0, and then we'll write that out. So we have our halves. We have our 1 fourth. We have our 1 eighth. Our 1 over 16. 1 over 32, 1 over 64, etc. Okay, so 0 0.65. Okay, well, half can go into that, so that's 0 0.5, so that leaves um, 0 0.15, right? So, right at one. So, uh, as it turns out, 0.25 cannot go into 0.15, so we write down 0 for that. Now, 1 eighth, uh, that's 0.125. So I can, if I stretch this out, I have 0.125. Okay. Um, that leaves us with 0. Point, um, let's see, this is, five, so this is 0. Uh, 0.25. Or 0. 0.025, I should say. Okay. Um, so, right. So it looks like 1 eighth uh, goes into that. Now, 1 16, let's see, 1 eighth is 0. 0.125. And just to remember this, so uh, 1 16th is going to be um, 0 0.0625. Now, 0 0.0625 does not go into that, so I'll just say that. Okay. Um, now, 1 32nd, um, that's going to be in decimal, it's the 0 0.03125. Uh, so that doesn't go there, so uh, there we go. But 164, that's going to be 0, 0.0, uh, that's going to be, yeah, 15625, if I did that right. Um, let me double check that really quick, but um, I think that's right. Um, now that actually does go into this thing over here, right? So if I spread that out, um, 0, 1, 5, 6, 2, 5. Well, okay, all right, this is where it gets a little hairy. Um, <clears throat> I can keep going, uh, 120, 1, 1, 128th, and well, uh, at some point we're gonna kind of get tired of doing this, but, um, uh, right, um, let's see, so, but before we do that, um, let's take a look. Um, let's see, yeah, so, right, um, yeah, okay, um, so let's just double check this. Okay, so we have, uh, let's just do the subtraction really quick. So let me just do that. Uh, boy, that's, mm, okay, so that's going to be 5. So we know that's what that's going to be. So now we have to pull some things in. So we, um, let's just subtract this stuff out. So, um, okay, so uh, this is going to be 4. You know what? I think I, I goofed that up. I should be yeah, because we have to pull that in. So that's gonna be seven. Uh, nine minus six is gonna be three. Of 
4 minus 1, well, okay, so that's going to be 1, this is going to be 14 minus 5, 14 minus 5 is going to be uh, 9, okay, and that's just going to be 0, 0, okay, okay, great. So there we have it, so, okay, well, um, and I don't know what 1, 128 is um, off the top of my head, but uh, in any event, you notice that, I mean, it, we could keep going, but uh, you notice that this value over here, right, represented very nicely in decimal, right? Um, that looks nice, but in, in binary, it's rather hairy, actually. Um, it's really kind of hairy. <coughs> now, as I understand it, um, this number is kind of analogous. It's the same. It's this this in, in binary is analogous to this number here in decimal. You cannot represent this number exactly in binary, as it turns out. Um, you can try that on your own. I'd like for you to keep trying this. But uh, uh, in any event, um, you might notice when you are dealing with uh, floating point numbers that the number that you put in, like say 0 0.65, is not necessarily going to be the same as the number that you get out when you, uh, say, print that number out, like some binary number. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, of this sort of this problem where uh, we only have a fixed number of bits to, to work with, right? And so we have computers that are finite in some sense. So we only have a finite number of bits to deal with. And so um, that means we can only uh, represent fractional parts with a certain level of precision. And then beyond that level of precision, we have nothing left. Um, but we can run into this issue very, you know, with, with some pretty simple numbers like 0.65. Um, so it's kind of an interesting problem. Um, so this is another reason why, by the way, if you're dealing with, say, currency, you would never want to use a float uh, for currency. It's kind of a bad idea. So float for, you know, currency is kind of a, you know, big, big no-no. I would say you say big no, don't do that, right? So. Yeah, so don't do that. Uh, in any event, um, that's uh, what I wanted to get out of this uh, uh, lesson today about doing binary to decimal conversions Oops. with fractions. So we're dealing with fractions now. So there you go. So that's the uh, long and the whole of it.